Hey, what's up guys, Tino here, and today I'm interviewing Dr. Milton Mills to talk about dairy and whether we should be consuming it. So many people are now transitioning away from dairy and going for alternative calcium sources. So let's jump right into the interview and get into the topic. According to current theories of the evolution of Homo sapiens, Homo sapiens are felt to be, that is modern humans, to be about 100,000 years old. The earliest known evidence for the use of mammals for their milk is as old as 6,000 years in certain areas of the world. But in Western European countries, it's about 3,000 years that we have good evidence for the use of dairy foods. Human beings, again, according to evolutionary theory, existed for almost 100,000 years before we started using other mammals for their milk. So clearly, we don't need it. And it's, it's really absurd to argue that any mammal needs to drink the milk of another species. That's, that's just absurd on its face. Milk is a secretion that female mammals make that is designed to feed their babies. Nature, God, whoever you want to pull into this conversation, never intended that as adults, we would be drinking our own milk, let alone the milk of another species. The way I look at it, I'm sometimes even reluctant to call milk food. I mean, it's a material that we can ingest. In my mind, it's like using some recreational drug. I mean, it's not necessary. Yeah, it's optional. But you, it's not something that you have to do or that you need to do. And humans do not have to drink cow's milk or goat's milk or sheep's milk. And it doesn't supply any nutrient that we can't get elsewhere in our diet. Worldwide, the vast majority of humans are lactose intolerant, as are essentially all mammals. The sugar that is in mammal's milk is called lactose. But what lactose is, it's what's called a disaccharide, meaning it's a two individual sugar molecules that are linked together together into one molecule. Our bodies can only absorb single sugar molecules. So in order to be able to absorb lactose, you have to make an enzyme called lactase that actually splits the lactose molecule into its two individual sugars, glucose and galactose. All infant mammals make tons of lactase because, of course, they have to be able to absorb the lactose in their mother's milk. But as mammals mature and are weaned, their bodies stop making this enzyme. And it makes sense because enzymes are very large proteins that require a lot of intracellular machinery to actually create and then position in the digestive tract so that they can do their function. It makes no sense to continue making an enzyme that you really don't need. And since all mammals except humans stop drinking milk once they're weaned, all mammals Mammals stop making lactase as they become mature. That is also true for the vast majority of people around the world. The only people who have become what's called lactase persisters, and that is they have a genetic mutation that causes them to continue making lactase throughout their lifetime, are people who hail from an area in the world where the practice of dairying, using the milk of other mammals for food, was common. In Northern European countries, there's a very high percentage of people who are lactase persisters. And there's also certain East African tribes that have traditionally had a sort of pastoral economy where they used milk, and they are also um, lactase persisters. But everybody else, just floridly lactose intolerant. And that's really emphasized in this country when you look at people of color. The statistics are as follows. 90 95% of Asians are lactose intolerant, 74% of African Americans, 70% to 73% of Native Americans, and 53% of Hispanic Americans are lactose intolerant, as opposed to Caucasian Americans, where lactose intolerance is only about 33%. Amongst African Americans, if there hadn't been the sort of rapes of slave women that caused the mixing of European genes with West African genes, prevalence of lactose intolerance would be even higher than the 74%. But clearly, the majority of people of color are lactose intolerant. Again, that's true around the world. And that is why I helped co-author a paper where I talked about institutional racism in the U.S. Dietary Guidelines because the U.S. Dietary Guidelines, which are put out by the Department of Agriculture, not Health and Human Services, recommends that people eat dairy foods. And they recommend this knowing that if people of color consume these foods, they're going to get sick. But what's worse is that there really is no benefit to consuming dairy foods. Now, the number one reason dairy foods are touted is supposedly 
believe they are the best source of calcium. But the problem is that dairy calcium, in the majority of studies that have been done on it, has not been shown to be protective against osteoporosis, which is weakening of the bones, or against bone fractures, such as hip fractures or vertebral fractures. One or two studies that suggest there may be some benefit, but the vast majority of the studies do not show a benefit. And in fact, Harvard Mercer's Health Study showed that the women who consume the most milk had the highest risk of hip fracture. And if you look worldwide at dairy consumption, dairy consumption is highest in those countries that have the highest incidence of osteoporosis and weak bones. So there is no real benefit for consuming dairy foods if your goal is calcium consumption. What's even worse is that whole milk is very high in saturated fat. It has proteins that have been shown to be linked to a number of cancers, and particularly in this country where the cows are artificially impregnated and treated with a variety of hormones, including growth hormone and so forth. The milk and dairy foods tend to be very, very high in estrogens, growth hormone, which increases the level of something in called insulin-like growth factor, or IGF. Studies have shown that humans that have higher levels of IGF have a higher risk of the metabolic syndrome, chronic disease, but particularly cancers. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends human babies not be exposed to cow's milk until they are more than a year of age, because there are many, many, many studies showing that early exposure to cow's milk for human infants increases their risk of iron deficiency anemia because of the proteins in the milk, but it also markedly increases their risk of developing type 1 diabetes. And type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune phenomenon where the body attacks the insulin-producing cells in the pancreas and kills them. Part of what happens is babies are born with an incomplete set of digestive enzymes. Proteins are digested by being cleaved by a suite of about five different digestive enzymes. If you have all five of those enzymes, you can then take any protein and break it down into all of its individual amino acids. One of the things that babies are supposed to get from their mothers is passive immunity, meaning that they are supposed to absorb antibodies in the mother's milk so that that will help them ward off diseases that their immature immune systems haven't had a chance to react to. And the reason that they're able to do that is because they don't have all of their protein digesting enzymes. So instead of breaking proteins up into individual amino acids, babies break the proteins up into large fragments and they are able to absorb protein fragments. That allows them to absorb their mother's antibodies intact. And certain genetically susceptible individuals, when they are exposed to bovine serum albumin, it's chopped up into protein fragments that when they're absorbed, the body recognizes this as a non-human protein fragment. And it makes antibodies against those cow's milk protein fragments. In certain instances, again, in these genetically susceptible individuals, if they have these antibodies to the cow's milk protein, if they get certain kinds of infections, those proteins will then attack their insulin producing cells and kill them and they end up with type 1 diabetes. That's why it's recommended that you don't expose human infants to cow's milk until they have all of their digestive enzymes and that means they have to be older than a year old. Very good reasons for never exposing your child to cow's milk protein. Then there's also the fact that cow's milk have been associated with exacerbation of problems like asthma and respiratory issues. That may sound odd to people. Well, you know, why would milk cause respiratory problems. Any infant mammal comes into the world with a very immature immune system. So its mother's milk has to do several things. One, stimulate it to grow. Two, also confer passive immunity while the baby's immune system is starting to rev up. But it also stimulates that baby's immune system. And when you think about the way that our respiratory tree keeps itself clean, it's through the production of mucus. Our entire respiratory tree is lined with mucus, which is designed to trap dust, bacteria, fungi, and not permit it to get down into the lungs and we either cough it up and spit it out or we swallow it where the bugs are killed by digestive enzymes. And so one of the things that milk does is it helps rev up the production of mucus. Well, that's fine if you're a baby mammal and you need to get your uh, immune system jump started. But if you are an adult or a child who already has asthma or other respiratory problems like chronic sinusitis, that extra mucus production then causes you to have more asthma exacerbations, makes you more prone to getting respiratory infections and sinusitis. So that's yet another reason to avoid it. And there's also studies that link 
the consumption of dairy to acne in teenagers. And that's probably through overstimulating their immune system, which causes them to have these breakouts. The data on the link between cow's milk and type 1 diabetes in children and iron deficiency anemia is solid and strong. I think that when you actually look at the preponderance of studies, most of them do suggest that there is a link between dairy consumption and ovarian cancer. Now, again, there are some studies that failed to show a link, but there's no study that shows that dairy foods are protective against uh, ovarian cancer. So what you have is the possibility that consuming dairy foods raises the risk for ovarian cancer. And no, the, the link is not definitive, but there is evidence that there is a causal link. Why should women risk their lives ingesting material they don't need when there's a chance it could cause one of the most lethal cancers that can strike a woman? The vast majority of women who develop ovarian cancer die from it because by the time they become aware of it, it is already spread and it is very difficult to treat. You have a possible link between the consumption of dairy foods and a very lethal cancer on one hand and no real benefit on the other. So why would you play Russian roulette with your health? So that's, again, a good reason that I think women should avoid consuming dairy foods. In the United States, African-American men have more than twice the prevalence of prostate cancer compared to Caucasian men. And when African-American men develop prostate cancer, it is more aggressive, it is harder to treat, and it kills us much more quickly and much more often than the, the uh, varieties that strike white men. There are very strong links between dairy consumption and prostate cancer. You know, my mother named me after her one and only brother, and my uncle died from metastatic prostate cancer. So this is something that hits me, I mean, you know, right, right in the chest. Not only did it kill my uncle, but I have several good friends who've actually died in their 50s from prostate cancer. So this is no joke and it's nothing to play with. And in fact, if you read the China study, Dr. Colin Campbell showed that dairy protein was strongly linked to liver cancer in children. And it's been linked to a number of other problems, including multiple sclerosis and other, other issues. So dairy protein, not only is it not necessary, it should be avoided. To suggest that someone should drink milk to get their phosphorus, potassium, and magnesium is like suggesting that someone inhaled cigarette smoke to get oxygen. Yeah, there's oxygen in it, but there's a whole lot of other stuff that will harm you. And the same thing is true for the dairy food. Magnesium, phosphorus, potassium are widely available in all sorts of plant foods that have all sorts of nutrients and phytochemicals and other things that are good for you. You do not need to suck on the teeth of a cow to try to get phosphorus. That's just the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. What we call vitamin D is a compound that chemically is like 125-dihydroxycalciferol. It is a substance that our bodies will make when we have skin exposed to sunlight. The only reason that hormone started being called a vitamin was because early on, the dairy industry began adding it to milk to make the consumption of dairy foods more attractive. So they put it in the milk and then they called it vitamin D. That would be like me putting testosterone in milk and calling it vitamin T. It's not a vitamin, it's a hormone. And it's a hormone, as I said, that all humans make when we have skin exposed to sunlight for significant periods of time. Granted, there is a problem for humans living in more northerly latitudes because of the temperate weather and the longer winters, we tend to be covered up and we tend to be indoors. So we don't get the sun exposure we need to make adequate amounts of the calciferol. But you can get so-called vitamin D supplement. You don't have to drink milk to get it. You can go to your drugstore and get your little bottle of vitamin D3, take it every day, and you're fine. And or if you are able to be out in the sun where you have your arms and, and torso exposed for at least a half an hour to an hour a day, depending on the latitude, you'll make your own. You don't need to ingest this unnatural compound just because they poured something in it to try and sucker you into getting it big selling point for the dairy industry and when they try to push their products on people is that, oh, it has calcium, it has calcium. Studies have shown that when a person drinks a glass of milk, they actually lose more calcium in their urine than they're able to absorb from the glass of milk. There's something called fractional absorption of a nutrient. Humans can only absorb 23 to 24% of the calcium that's in a given amount of milk. So that means that, yeah, you might have 300 milligrams of calcium in a glass of milk, but you're not going to absorb it all. You're only going to absorb 
absorb somewhere between 17 to 23 percent of it. And in fact, years ago, there was an attempt by the dairy industry to produce a protein reduced version of milk in an effort to decrease the amount of calcium loss associated with drinking milk. That product, I don't think ever made it to market, but it was a definite attempt on their part. And that shows that they recognize that the amount of protein in milk causes problems in terms of uh, calcium balance because we end up losing more calcium than we can gain. Cows don't drink milk, but there's tons of calcium in their milk. Where does it come from? It comes from the stuff they eat, the green leafy vegetables. If you take a six foot human being and take all of the flesh off, just take his skeleton, the entire skeleton in a six foot human being will weigh about 25 pounds. A full set of antlers on a mature bull moose weighs between 80 to 85 pounds. And, and they're made out of solid bone. And the animal produces it within three months eating nothing but green plants. There's tons of calcium in plants. It is a giant myth that you can only find calcium in dairy foods. Calcium is widely distributed throughout the plant kingdom and readily available. And it comes along with a whole bunch of other things that are actually healthy for you as opposed to, you know, protein that damages your body and saturated fat that clogs your arteries and, and the hormones and the other things that are in dairy foods. So you do not need dairy foods to get your calcium and get it directly from the plant, just like every other large mammal on this planet. Okay, so I hope you guys found this video valuable. I wanna know what do you think about dairy? Drop a comment down below. Give this video a like, share it around, and subscribe for more videos just like this. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.